Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. Meghan Markle is completely unrecognizable with her natural hair. Although Meghan Markle became an international name when she married into the royal family in May 2018, she first found fame back in 2002 when she appeared on General Hospital as Nurse Jill. From there, Markle appeared in Deal or No Deal, The League, and CSI, Miami before booking her best-known role as Rachel Zane on Suits in 2011. Years later, when Markle would appear on red carpets, and you know, casually sip tea with Queen Elizabeth, her dark hair was nothing short of perfect. No flyaways, frizz, or strands out of place. But how? We'll reveal her secret, but before we do, it's important to note that Markle's hair was very curly once upon a time. Catfish co-host Cammie Crawford brought this to the public's attention in 2017, announcing the news to her followers on social media. Solved my own case, Crawford wrote on Twitter, along with sharing several throwback photos of Markle's sporting curls. We got curls in the royal palace. Starting a petition to get Meghan to wear a fresh wash and go around the palace. So, what's Markle's secret to her luscious locks? And what does her hair look like curly? Keep watching to find out. Meghan Markle's beauty secrets revealed. Meghan Markle is known to rock sleek and flawless hair, and to achieve this look, the former actor uses a number of popular products. There are two lines I use religiously, Karatase, Mask Intense, and the Oleo Relax line. And Wella, which has a hair oil that I am obsessed with, the former actress told Beauty Banter pre-Royal Thing. It smells like vacation and makes your hair slippery and touchable. I love this stuff. It also doubles as a pretty amazing oil post bath. As for how Markle tames her flyaways and frizz, the suit's alum told Birch Fox in 2014 that she sprays hairspray on a small boar bristle toothbrush to lightly brush them down or smooth the hairline. She added, This is especially good for a sleek bun when I'm off camera. Markle also revealed a hair flip is key for volume. She continued, When my hair is feeling a little weighted, Swang, my hair artist on set, has me bend forward as she sprays a little Oribe dry texturizing spray, and then has me flip back hard to give my hair a little extra bounce. It sounds like Markle picked up a bunch of hairstyling tips for free during her time as an actor. Talk about an awesome perk. Meghan Markle has a real sense of style. After joining the royal family, Meghan Markle has pulled off looks such as a low bun and beach waves when going to events, and it's all thanks to her UK hairstylist, George Northwood. He told British Vogue in March 2020, As a hairdresser, you just have a more intimate role, getting someone ready. We made collie girl hair a bit more formal and had a real laugh. Since Markle is from Los Angeles, California, Northwood knew they would get along swimmingly. As soon as I met her, she was just like my California girl clients. She said, I'm a collie girl, and I just said, one of my favorites then. We hit it off. We immediately spoke the same language. Northwood called Markle a very modern princess, and because of that, the hair dust fell into that. He explained, the way she approaches things is how an everyday woman would approach things. She has a real sense of style, and she wanted to look approachable, even though she was a princess. Meghan Markle's wedding reception look was stunning. After Meghan Markle and Prince Harry got married, the two drove off into the sunset, literally, and Markle's hair was nothing short of amazing. In fact, Markle's wedding reception look made waves all over the internet after its debut. So how did Markle and her hairstylist, George Northwood, come up with the idea? It all started with a chat about Markle's bowls for her special reception. The evening was intimate, 
for family and friends, a time for Megan to be herself. By this point, the messy bond had become such a thing, and we wanted to do something equally relaxed and effortless, Northwood divulged to British Vogue. Often with brides, and this was no different, the daytime bit is a bit more nerve, racking, and then the evening comes and it's more about wanting to have fun. That's what my hair is about. It's wearable, effortless, and can withstand a dance floor. Although Markle recently relocated to Los Angeles with Prince Harry and their son, Archie, Northwood revealed he still checks in all the time. And of course, he couldn't help but gush about spending time with Markle, memories he cherishes to this day. He raved. Working with Markle and Harry was an enormous privilege and I enjoyed every minute. We created some iconic moments. Iconic moments, indeed. Of course, Meghan Markle's hair is beautiful no matter how she wears it. Way to keep up the killer looks, Duchess. While many leaders of the free world might think of themselves as royalty, looking at you, Donald Trump, almost all of them still need the same thing to travel around the world, a passport. Except for one, that is, none other than the United Kingdom's Queen Elizabeth II. Ever since being crowned in 1953, the Queen has been able to travel freely around the globe without identification for nearly seven decades. So how is this possible? To get an idea, it's worth it to take a look at a bit of text inserted in every British passport today and has been in various iterations for centuries. As per the royal family's official website, the text in question is as follows. Her Britannic Majesty's Secretary of State requests and requires in the name of Her Majesty all those whom it may concern to allow the bearer to pass freely without let or hindrance and to afford the bearer such assistance and protection as may be necessary. What exactly does this mean? And how does it explain why and how Queen Elizabeth II doesn't need a passport to get around? Let's take a closer look. The explanation for why the Queen doesn't need a passport is a straight-up history lesson. According to a 2006 article from The Guardian, the first iteration of the British passport purportedly surfaced during the reign of King Henry V, or Timothy Chalamet with a bowl cut, for readers who aren't familiar with the history of the British monarchy. As The Guardian explained, parliamentary paperwork referring to a safe conduct document first popped up in 1414 in regards to ensuring both British subjects and foreign nationals a sense of security while traveling, though the former had to pay for said documents while the latter did not. Due to the fact that these safe conduct documents were issued by the monarch themselves, or in this case Henry V, there was never a need to bestow that permission. It would be redundant, at the very least. Or, as The Atlantic put it in a 2015 article on the subject, no pun intended, the Queen doesn't need a passport because she essentially is one. Though these documents came under the jurisdiction of the Privy Council, essentially a cabinet of advisers, in 1540, so although the earliest version of the passport hasn't been something the ruling British monarch has directly issued for centuries, it's still something they don't necessarily need. Even so, only the reigning king or queen can travel without one. As the royal family's official website states, all other members are required to possess one to travel abroad. If Queen Elizabeth II doesn't need a passport, why does everyone else? So, if Queen Elizabeth II doesn't have to obtain or carry a passport to go in and out of the United Kingdom, then why do other leaders of other countries have to? Once again, the key to this query is all in the passport text. As The Atlantic pointed out in 2015, the issuance text in the typical UK passport calls the Queen, Her Britannic Majesty, a reference to her as a sovereign. If you compare it to a passport from the United States, you'll find that a similar type of issuance text names 
the Secretary of State as the one who can, hereby request all whom it may concern to permit the citizen or national of the United States named herein. You don't have to look too closely to realize that sovereign and citizen or national are synonymous, and it's the reason everyone from the average U.S. resident to the President of the United States needs one to get around. As with history, UK passports repeat themselves, sort of. Unlike Queen Elizabeth II, the Secretary of State, in this case, currently Secretary Mike Pompeo, is both a citizen and employee of the democratic U.S., not a crowned ruler in a country whose government operates as a constitutional monarchy. And while the Queen and the rest of the royal family might have titles that are mostly ceremonial, with a Prime Minister and Parliament that actually operate as a government body, Elizabeth II is still considered a sovereign first and foremost. The question remains, is this ever likely to change? According to the Express, most likely not, as they put it, after her eventual death, any current passport will still be considered valid, and the phrasing of the issuance text will simply be tweaked to refer to whoever succeeds her, either her direct heir Prince Charles, or if he steps aside, his own eldest son, Prince William. The more you know, right? So there you have it, that's all the news on Meghan and Prince Harry situation today. As always, thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and press that notification bell. If you want to be notified of future videos. Thank you. Don't stop.